Welcome to Hacks Be Shared. I've been asked a number of times how to set up screw cutting on this Harrison 140 lathe. I'll do my best to explain. I'm not going to go into the very basics of screw cutting. I'm going to focus this on how to set up this particular lathe. All the information is in the manual, but there were many evolutions of this lathe and a number of different gearboxes and it is quite difficult to understand. So I'll do my best to explain. Setting up your lathe gearbox for screw cutting is all about setting the right ratio between the spindle and this lead screw. So, so if you were cutting a metric pitch of 0.125 millimeters, you would set it up so that when this rotates once, this carriage moves along 0.125 millimetres. If you were setting 20 TPI, when this revolves once, this carriage would move along 50 thou. Having said that, some complications begin to creep in straight away if you're trying to cut imperial threads on a metric lathe or vice versa. Now, we need to ask ourselves, what is an imperial lathe? and what is a metric lathe. Okay, we know the dials will be metric on a metric lathe, but there's a bit more to it than that. It relates on screw cutting, it relates to the pitch of this lead screw. So on this metric lathe, the pitch is six millimeters. On its imperial predecessor, it was quarter of an inch. Now that affects the gearing, particularly in these chain wheels. But it also has an effect on how you operate the lathe when you're screw cutting. Most people will be familiar with this dial indicator. And when it's engaged, it tells you when you can re-engage the half nuts when you're cutting your threads. And there's a table on the end of the apron here, which tells you what numbers to align on this dial so you engage the half nuts in the right place. And that works fine on a metric lathe for metric threads and on an imperial lathe for imperial threads. It doesn't work when you're trying to cut imperial threads on a metric lathe and vice versa. So although this lathe uh, can be set up to cut both imperial and metric threads, this dial indicator here only works for the metric threads. But you can work around that if you know. So now let's talk about the gearbox. In many ways, it's better to think about this gearbox as an imperial gearbox because that's how it was designed and made. And when Harrison wanted to introduce this metric lathe, they kept this part of the gearbox entirely the same but they added this extra knob to give some more metric threads. And that explains, when you look at the imperial thread pitches, all of these positions are used on this slider at the bottom here, but on the metric threads, it jumps all over the place because the metric threads were a kind of add-on. How can we use an imperial gearbox to cut metric threads? That's what they were trying to do. These are the change wheels and they provide the drive from here down to the input shaft on the screw cutting gearbox. These wheels are currently set up for a range of metric threads. And these act a bit like the high-low select if you've got a 4x4. So the screw cutting gearbox is like the main gearbox on your vehicle and then these can be set to high, high range, low range, or whatever you want. And obviously changing these also affects the rate of the power feed for the saddle. So let's look at the gearbox. And I'm going to talk about the imperial settings first, because somehow they make more sense, because that's what this gearbox was designed for. So for all of the imperial settings, assuming you've set the right change wheels, this lever's always over to the right. 
you can, you can basically ignore it once you set it to the right there. It was only added to get additional metric threads. And each of these positions, although there's each of these has two positions, actually uh, there's only three valid combinations. And it provides a doubler to step up through the ranges for this. Hope that makes sense. And then, once you've set these as you want them, each position here gives a different valid imperial pitch. So, for example, if I set my change wheels to 50, 63, 40, 120, if I set both of these levers to the left, like this, this one's to the right, then I can count off each of these positions sequentially as 15 TPI, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9 and a half, strangely, 9 and 8. If I change to the next combination, which actually is going to be both to the right, that won't go at the minute, but it will when I turn the lathe over, then everything I've just said gets doubled. So 30, 28, Da, da 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 down to 16. So you notice it was all doubled. And if I was to set to the next range, which is this way and that way, it gets doubled again, starting with 60 here, down to 32. So that all makes sense, doesn't it? Because every position on the gearbox is used. And then we come to metric. So the designers thought, oh, well, how do we... How do we cut my trick with this then? <clears throat> and what they found was they didn't have enough um, valid metric threads. They can change these change wheels to suit uh, nearer to metric screw cutting, but there weren't enough valid positions on here and here. So they added this to get some more valid threads. Now, if I show you this, I'll I will show this on the computer later, but if you can see that, Look at the green squares. You can see clearly not every position on that table is used. The green squares are valid metric threads. So they've picked out from the range of imperial threads modified by the change wheels and the lead screw, they've picked out valid metric threads. Okay. Now the thread information for metric is on this table here. So you set up the change wheels according to what it says, the levers according to what it says, this according to what it says, and guess what? According to what it says, it'll cut the right thread. And dare I say, it's kind of as simple as that. It's, it's lots of knobs and stuff to do, but actually, when you understand it at that level, it kind of makes sense. So I will, when I get onto the computer, I will bring this table up on the screen and uh, then you'll be able to read it properly and I can perhaps explain a little bit more. This is the gearbox settings chart for a Harrison 140 lathe to cut imperial threads. The basic shape of this chart would look just the same if you had an L5A with a Norton 36 speed gearbox. But you'd add a different wheel set. So the wheel set for the coarsest of imperial threads is 50, 63, 80, 120. So the only gear that you don't get a standard there with a 140 is the 63 tooth. And then to cut the finer imperial threads is 50, 63, 40, 120. And the 63 and the 40, you don't get a standard with a 140 lathe. As I said before, ignore the third knob, simply turn it to the right. So this row here I'm showing is for that third knob. Just turn that to the right and then you could ignore it thereafter. And then the other two knobs just serve as doublers. Look, 7.5, 15, 30, 60. So that pretty much covers the imperial threads. This is the metric 
screw cutting chart. Basically three ranges, coarse, medium and fine. Just ignore the fact I've written coarse twice and also please ignore the fact that I couldn't spell gearbox properly on the previous slide. And the valid metric pitches are marked in green. And the way I worked all this out was I knew that I had a six millimeter lead screw. And if I chose a pitch which was six millimeter, I knew that the train of gears and within the gearbox must be one to one with the spindle. So having worked out what one to one was, I then looked at the imperial threads and work backwards, if you can follow what I'm saying, to work out what the ratios, overall ratios must be in all of these intermediate settings. And then I picked out the valid metric pitches. So these in orange, I'm showing here, were not on the charts. They're not on the charts at the side of the gearbox. But by that method I explained, I was able to work out that these are also the ones in orange are also valid metric pitches. Now it doesn't invent any new pitches. So we've got one here and we've got one here, but what it means is that I don't have to change the change wheels so often. And you can see the wheel sets 50, 80, 80, 25, 100, 80, 25, 100, 60, 120. And all of those gears come with the Harrison as standard. And you'll find these tables in the manual but as I said earlier, it's always a bit difficult to know which table really applies. When you know that, though, you basically just set the three knobs, one, two, three, according to the plate on the side of the gearbox. And you might note these extra three orange ones. Anyway, I hope that's useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacks Be Shared.